So in today's video, we're going to discuss why companies hedge and whether it makes sense for them to do so or not. This video is part of a longer series of finance videos about financial derivatives. If you're interested in that topic, you might find some of my other videos interesting. I'd like to start this video off with a question that I usually ask my students when we first start learning about hedging with derivatives. If there's an American manufacturing company and it buys all of its supplies locally in US dollars, they're made in America, priced in dollars, they sell all of their goods to American consumers, once again, who pay in US dollars, and they pay all of their staff, all of their American staff, in US dollars. Does this company have any foreign exchange risk? In class, when I ask this question, I usually ask for a show of hands, and often about half of the class say yes, and the other half say no. Well, that's not really true. Most try to avoid raising their hands, and half of the people who do raise their hands say yes, and the other half say no. But anyhow, it, w it would often appear, uh, you know, on, on first look at this question, it would appear that the answer is no, because there's nothing really foreign going on. It's, it's all American and it's all dollar denominated. But the answer is actually yes. The company does have foreign exchange risk. And think about it for a moment and then I'll tell you why. The reason that the company does have foreign exchange risk is actually just if they have one foreign competitor. So how does that work? Well, if the, if the price of the foreign currency falls in relation to the US dollar, the foreign competitor has a cost advantage in terms of labor cost and maybe even in raw materials cost as well. And thus they can undercut the US company's prices and potentially take business from them. So the truth, what we're kind of learning here is that every company in truth is exposed to risks like foreign exchange risk. And so then we're left with the question whether that company should hedge that foreign exchange risk or not. Now, in the above example, I would say that they probably shouldn't spend their time hedging that risk because it might just be too complicated and unproductive to hedge global currency risks for, you know, a manufacturer of, we'll say, simple goods. But it's worthwhile still being aware of the risks that your company is exposed to. So that then leads us to the question of why should companies hedge their exposures? Most companies produce goods or provide services and may not have particular skills in predicting market prices, things like interest rates, exchange rates, commodity prices, and so on. If these prices are important drivers of the company's costs, often it might make sense to hedge those, those exposures just to reduce business uncertainty so that the company can focus on being the best they can at their core expertise of manufacturing goods or services. Many academics and investors argue that shareholders can in fact just hedge themselves individually if they want to hedge against certain market exposures and that therefore the companies that they invest in should not be hedging because investors might, have, we'll say a good example is investors might have invested in a gold mining company because they felt that the price of gold was going to rise. And so they might be unhappy to find out that the gold mining company was actually hedging their gold exposure and thus when the price of gold went up the investor does not actually get the gains they were hoping for. This is a good argument, it's a reasonable argument, and it's reasonable to say that the investor can protect themselves from excess exposures to certain economic variables, either through holding a diversified portfolio or through hedging the exposures themselves. This, of course, ignores the fact that hedges are usually cheaper if done in size, so it's cheaper for a gold company to, to hedge their overall gold production than it is for an investor who might own a hundred shares in that company to invest whatever their portfolio's gold exposure is. Um, the other argument 
And, and the real argument for a company doing at least some hedging is that it allows them to have some visibility of future prices and thus allows them to make more long-term business plans. So let's look at an example of that. We'll say, for example, a breakfast cereal company. They might decide on the pricing of a box of oatmeal one year in advance. They might design a box, they've printed the price of the oatmeal on that box, and they, they might be printing that box a year in the future. It's gone out to graphic designers, it takes some time. So if they were unable to hedge their short-term exposure to the price of oats, it might make things quite difficult when negotiating pricing with supermarkets and their customers might find it annoying to see the price constantly moving around every time they go to the supermarket because of increases or decreases in the price of a, a basic commodity. So the company might also have difficulty making any kind of long-term plans or projections in, in, in building a business plan when their profit margins are entirely unknown because the profit margin changes as the price of the underlying commodity changes. So how do companies then hedge? Short futures hedges are usually used when the company owns the asset already and expects to sell it in the future. So examples are farmers, gold mining companies, petroleum producers, um, companies like that. Then long futures hedges are used when the company knows that it will have to purchase that asset in the future. So an example of that would be a breakfast cereal company like we just talked about who need to purchase grains or we'll say an airline company that needs to purchase jet fuel in order to operate its fleet of planes. So hopefully that's explained to you whether companies should hedge, the pros and cons a little bit of, of hedging, and how people hedge with futures. Now in a future video we're going to look at options and how they can be used in hedging. Let me know in the comments section below what you think about companies hedging. When does it make sense? When is it a waste of time? Um, these videos are all based on my book and if you're interested in them you might also be interested in the book. There's a link to it in the description below. If you found the video helpful please hit the like button, please subscribe if you'd like to see more and as I said feel free to comment and let me know if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover. Have a great day and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.